Buenos dias. Bonjour. Ni hao. Guten Morgen. Aloha. Yata e. Yon giorno. Konnichiwa. Yanaseo. Stras vizia. Assalamu alaikum. Nuch ne. Ah, uh, oha. Uh, yo hablo un poco de español. Uh, yo visité México uh, durante 1988 uh, cuando era estudiante. Uh, no hablo bien en español, uh, not anymore. Uh, yo hablo español como una vaca francés. Uh, pero uh, recuerdo algunas uh, frases importantes uh, como hola uh, y como uh, dónde está el baño y, y uh, él fue atropellado por un coche uh, <laughs> y, y conozco algunas uh, otras frases uh, de uh, otros idiomas uh, como nuchtajo uh, puchpae y ilwedj jazjaj y klingan mah y kaplach and uh, and no, I'm not going to translate any of that. Uh, in fact, I'm not even going to put it into the captions because the whole point is it's really annoying uh, when you try to understand something and you don't know the language. Uh, that's what it's like when you write your programs in English and someone from Spain or Germany tries to use it and they don't know English. And so there really needs to be a way for your programs to speak with uh, the native language of your user. And so that's really what this week's video is all about. So there's a a uh, programming uh, library called cat get us. It's a, a catalog message catalog based system. It's where cat comes from. Uh, and so it's able to open these message catalogs and each message catalog is a different language. Uh, we have a version of that also called cat get us. I wrote that long ago, uh, but there was another version, a newer version called kitten. It's a smaller version of cat get us. So, uh, and that was uh, uh, really, uh, taken cat get s and uh, really modified it overhauled it uh, and made it much better and so thanks to uh, tom ellert and uh, eric hour for doing that work uh, years ago and so i wanted to do a demonstration about how to use kitten to support different spoken languages in your freedos program so let's take a look uh, so here i've downloaded uh, the kitten library and i'll put a link to this in the video description so uh, this is the uh, kitten library uh, so the important thing is, uh, let's, let's start up a new file here. We'll call this one, um, call this one test, test.c. So uh, the, 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 uh, the concept for this is simple. So this is the, um, how you would use, um, how to use kitten. And so it's basically, you need to open a message catalog. Uh, you need to uh, then get uh, a string uh, from the catalog. And you're going to do that multiple times. Obviously, every time you need to get uh, a message, uh, you're going to uh, print a message. You're going to need to get it from the message catalog first. And by the way, you're going to grab that using basically a two-dimensional coordinate system. You're going to use a what's called a message set and another one that is a message number. We'll talk about what that is in a, uh, in a little bit. But uh, basically, that's that allows you to group messages into message sets like error messages, information messages, welcome messages, things like that. And then the message number is the identifier within that message set. And then uh, when you're done uh, with uh, printing messages before you uh, exit the program, you should probably uh, close the message catalog. And so that's the concept of how to use Kitten. So how do you do uh, Kitten? So let's go ahead and write a sample program here. So we're gonna do uh, include um can't write here uh, include standard io and we're going to include the local file uh, kitten.h and so my uh, my main program uh, i'm not going to call any command line uh options so i'm going to have an empty parameter list here and so you're going to need to have a uh, a string pointer that you can use so we're going to do a care uh, stir and that's a character string pointer I mean, that's just a pointer um, to a string you don't have to do that I'll show you in a, in a second you don't actually have to be calling it and then storing it a pointer just to use later but it's handy if you do want to uh, use it somewhere else you can you can uh, or multiple times you can that, that's a handy thing to do um, and so let's go ahead and open the catalog so open the catalog and so you're gonna do that with uh, kitten open 
and you need to give it an argument, which is basically the base name, the file base name for whatever your message catalog is. So in this case, uh, we'll call it uh, test. Now, if you're using uh, cat get s, if you're familiar with that library, you actually uh, also need to pass it another option and you need to carry or store the uh, catalog descriptor. Uh, but we don't need to do that in Kitten. Kitten's going to deal with only one message catalog at a time, which is actually a really great simplification because most of the time that's what we're going to do anyway. Uh, so we've opened it with Kitten open. And then behind the scenes, Kitten is going to take care of uh, only pulling from that message catalog. And so let's go ahead and uh, we'll grab some strings. So you can grab the, um, uh, so let, let's print some strings. And I'll show you two ways to do it. So one way you can do it is you can uh, use uh, kitten get s. And so that's going to get a string from the kitten library. Again, kitten is just a short version of the kit of the message catalog system, cat get s. Uh, and it's because of a smaller version, it's kitten. So uh, cat get s or kitten get s. Uh, we're going to pull from the message set. In this case, we'll we'll pull from message set one, and the message number. Uh, in this case, we'll do one. And then you need to have a default string. So what if what if the uh, the file wasn't there, or what if this message isn't there? Uh, what's it going to print? And so you probably want to print some sort of a default message. And so we'll say uh, we'll say hello world. Um, now we need to store that somewhere and that's where that uh, string pointer comes in. So we need to store that into uh, stir. And that allows you to uh, print it using put s, put s stir. Uh, or you can call it directly. And so you can uh, do it all in one line. So we can do put s and then do a kitten get s on, uh, let's say message set one, and uh, message number two, and it could be a string like uh, this is a test. Oops, and then closing bracket for the put s. Right, so you could do it in, in one step as well. Whatever makes more sense to you, whatever is more readable. Uh, and now when you're done with your program, so you might put some other stuff here, right? Uh, and then when you're done with the program, uh, you're going to close the message catalog using kitten close. And because you can only open one catalog at a time, there is no option to kitten close. You don't actually have to pass out a message catalog. If, again, if you're familiar with the uh, cat get s uh, series of functions on, on Unix or Linux, um, you know, you need to pass the message catalog you want to close. Uh, but again, kitten can only open one catalog at a time. So there's no option here. It will just close the one that it has open. And then after that, uh, you're, you can return back the operating system. So we can do return zero. So um, I'm going to, it's a pretty simple test program, but it really is uh, that simple to pull strings. Uh, so again, all I'm doing is I've just got a, a, a pointer up here to a string that I'm going to use when I uh, use kitten get s. Uh, I'm going to open up a message catalog and the argument there is the file base name um, of the message catalog. Usually it's going to be the same thing as your program. So um, you know, if your program was Sinet for the simple Sinet game, uh, you'd probably call it Sinet as the base name. Uh, the extension, by the way, is going to be the language. We'll get that in a second. But uh, that's the that's the base name here is, is uh, test. Um, and then you can uh, pull strings out of that catalog using kitten get s, and you're going to use the uh, message set and the message number. And there's two different ways to do that. You can do it directly, or you can store it in a string and then uh, use that string. And then when you're done, you just do kit and close. And so that's that's all there is to uh, printing strings. So we can go ahead and uh, save and quit. Uh, and let's go ahead and compile it. So uh, let's uh, let's do motcom compiler and linker uh, on test.c, but also we'll compile kitten.c at the same time. And so there it is. I'm not seeing any warnings or errors, which is a good sign. So we can go to a directory and you can see we've got a uh, test.exe. Now, if we just run that test.exe, you know, it's going to print out my my default strings. There is no uh, message catalog for it to pull from. Well, how do you how do we test that? Well, let's go ahead and create a file, um, and we'll do um, you know what? I'll just do a very simple copy con. So copy con into test. Uh, let's call it en. In this case, we're going to capitalize. Uh, the, uh, the, the the strings and so we're going to do 
um, message set one period uh, message number and then uh, we're going to uh, do a colon and now we're going to put in our string so our string uh, was hello world let's put this in all caps so that we actually know we're pulling from this file so we'll do hello world all caps and then message set one uh, and then message number two was uh, this is a test and by the way you might have other things in in this file you might have um, maybe message set two is going to have a bunch of errors in it so it could be file not found uh, could be things like um, uh, could not open file could be uh, not enough memory Right, you kind of get the point. And so you might have another message set, maybe message set three are prompts. And so 3.1 could be uh, press Q to quit. Um, message set three, message number two could be uh, press F1 for help. Uh, could be things like that. So, you know, your message set can contain, uh, your message catalog can contain a lot of different strings, uh, everything that your program needs. We'll do control Z and that'll end that file and so if I do a type on test.en you can see that uh, certainly the first two lines and that's the ones we're going to use in our program uh, hello world and this is a test now we need to set a couple of environment variables real quick and so we need to set uh, lang uh, to whatever our preferred language is and in this case I'm going to do it as English and I'm going to set uh, the what's called the NLS path and I'm going to set that to uh, the drive that I'm in right now, just because that's where my file is, source kitten. And remember that uh, the language, language was en, and that's what I named my message catalog. So I've got my message catalog here that's test.en. And so now, without having to recompile the test.exe, all we've had to do is drop in a new language file. I can do test as the program and it prints out all uppercase and we know that it's pulling from the message catalog because inside the program itself uh, it was using a mixture of upper and lowercase so if I do uh, set lang equals we'll just set it to uh, zz and so if I run test again right there is no test.zz language file and so it's going to be pulling from those default strings again and that's all you really need to do to uh, use Kitten in your program. So it's a very simple way to support multiple languages. You can have inside those uh, language catalogs, you could have different prompts, you could have uh, different error messages, all kinds of things that your program needs to print needs to go into a message catalog. And other people can then translate those files, and then instantly your program can support other languages. So that's uh, how you use Kitten, and I'll go ahead and pause there for this week. Uh, before I exit the video, I just want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. Uh, thank you very much. Your support really means a lot to me, and you really do make this channel happen. Uh, some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you here, so thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedos.org, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.